Hey what's up, Richard Roseman here and welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to talk about highlight processing. Although this tutorial is directly related to DOF Pro, keep in mind this workflow applies to just about any depth of field processor in the industry. Alright, let's jump right into it. Whenever I work with DOF Pro, I like to first carefully analyze the footage I'm working on. Let's take a careful look at this image we'll be working with from Pixabay. The most important thing I want to consider is the overall image exposure, which is directly affected by three things. A camera's aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. This applies to both photography and CGI imagery. If we take a look at this reference image, we can see various examples of highlights that have decreased exposure levels, meaning the highlights don't ever reach 100% intensity. On the lower right side of each panel, you can see the peak brightness, some of which are as low as 75%. This is extremely important for us to know, especially in understanding how to correctly match our process highlight intensity to the photo's exposure level. One of the tools I use in Photoshop quite a bit for this is the Info Panel. This panel gives me lots of helpful information about the image pixel values. You can set it to display in various color models, such as RGB, CMYK, HSB, Lab, and more. For our tutorial, we're going to keep the primary color model as the RGB and the secondary is HSB, which represents hue, saturation, and brightness. I want to first analyze the overall image exposure. I can do this by checking out the pixel values of the highlights displayed in the brightness value of the HSB color model. For instance, if we hover our mouse over that streak our headlights, we can see they reach a peak intensity of approximately 87%. The blue streetcar light on the upper front reveals a peak intensity of approximately 85%. The brightest areas of the streetcar track have a peak intensity of approximately 88%. And the street lights have a peak intensity of approximately 86%. This information tells me that the general peak exposure level for this image lies approximately in the 85% range. Now that we know that, let's open up DOF Pro and get to work. First, I'll launch the plugin by going to Filters, Richard Rosenman, Depth of Field Generator Pro. Let's increase the preview window to 50%. The next thing I'll do is load our depth map. I do this by setting the depth mode to depth map, then clicking on Load, and selecting my custom depth map. If we take a look at it by clicking on View Depth, you can see it's a simple custom created depth map that highlights the figures in the foreground. Let's set it back to our source image. Next, let's set up our aperture. I'm going to switch our aperture to polygonal and give it seven blades. In other words, a heptagonal aperture. Let's also give it a touch of spherical aberration, something along the lines of 50%. Finally, I'm gonna make this aperture slightly anamorphic by setting the aspect ratio to 1.5. At this point, I like what we've got, so let's go ahead and introduce some depth of field. We'll do this by increasing the aperture size to a value of 10. This is looking good. Let's zoom in to 100% and take a closer look. We can see the depth of field is working correctly and defocusing only the scene behind the figures. However, the highlights need some punch. So let's set our preview resolution back to 50% and work on that. First, I'll set my highlight view to display view selected. This will specify the intensity value range of the highlights we want to affect. You can see the threshold is currently set to 255, but nothing is visible, which means the brightest highlights are under a value of 255. This is consistent with the image exposure of 85%, which we explored earlier. An 85% intensity peak level means the brightest pixel value in this image is about 170 of 255. Therefore, let's set our threshold to 170. Perfect. Now we can see the selected highlights which also happen to be the brightest parts of the image. If I switch my highlight view to view processed, I can see just the selected highlight range and what it looks like processed. Now let's enhance them a bit. I'll increase the enhancement value to 30. I'll also increase the saturation by setting it to 75. Let's see what it looks like in the render by switching our highlight view back to view rendered. Great. We can see our highlights have now come alive. They're bright, sharp, and quite vivid. If I zoom in again to 100%, I like what I see. 
But to add a touch more realism, I'm going to reintroduce some noise back into the defocused areas. I'm going to do this by setting a noise value of 3. I'm also going to set the distribution to blur amount so that it only reintroduces noise to the defocused areas. When I'm happy with my settings, I'm going to click on OK. Now that we've applied our depth of field effect, let's reconsider the image exposure we explored at the beginning. Our highlights look great, but they're overexposed when compared to the rest of the image. We can confirm this by taking a look at the highlight pixel intensity values once again with the help of the info panel. If I hover my mouse over them, we can see the highlights are now in the 100% intensity range. If we were working in 32-bit color depth, they'd be even brighter. What we need to do is bring them back down to 85% peak intensity. We can easily do this by clamping the overbright values using curves. We can apply the curves by going to Image, Adjustments, Curves. However, I prefer to do this non-destructively on the layer by clicking on the Layer Panel Color Correction drop-down and specifying a curves effect from there. I won't explain how curves work but suffice it to say that we can use it to clamp values above a certain threshold. Let's decrease the output level to something around 220. We can see this reduces not only the highlight intensity, but also the overall image intensity. Since we only want to affect the overexposed highlights, I will keep the rest of my values intact by adding a curve point near the 190 pixel value range. I'll also straighten the curve by adding one more point around the 95 range. This is looking much better. If we toggle the curves effect on and off, we can see it's affecting only the overexposed highlights. Now let's close the curves panel and explore our highlight pixel values once again with the info panel. Dragging our mouse over the same highlights as before, we can now see the info panel reports approximately 86% intensity, thereby matching our initial highlight intensity. And if we check the other highlights we explored earlier, we can see they too all hover around that range. We've now calibrated our image back to what it should be. That's it! We've successfully applied DOF Pro with bright, sharp, and vivid highlights, and then processed them back to match the photo's overall exposure. This ensures the depth of field effect will remain realistic. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and gotten a better understanding of how DOF Pro works and how to correctly process highlights. Keep checking the video channel for new tutorials.